Hey folks, how's it going? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Johnny. Today, I'm going to look at a technique you can use to document your Power BI dataset. Everyone loves creating beautiful reports and visualizations in Power BI. And some of us even get a kick out of all the data modeling aspects too. But when it comes to documentation, let's face it, it's pretty damn boring. So I'm going to show you a technique that aims to take away some of that documentation pain, some of the tediousness. There are two steps you need to follow. Firstly, always make sure you keep your metadata updated in your Power BI model. What does that even mean? Well, if we take a look at a Power BI data model, I can show you. This is the file for my Contoso retail data set. We head over to the modeling view. Over on the right hand side, you have this properties pane. In the fields pane, when I select any object, you'll see different properties appear. For each type of object, it's possible to add a description. It's possible to add those descriptions against tables, columns, measures, and hierarchies, amongst other things. You should do yourself a favor and make it a habit to fill these descriptions out. One good benefit is that if you choose to publish this data model with the intention that end users will be able to connect to it and self-serve and build their own reports, then whenever they hover over an object in the fields pane, the description will be displayed in the tooltip. This means when users are building those reports, you can help them understand the data in your data model better which I believe gives an improved end user experience. But the other big benefit is that you can query this metadata. If I hop over into DAX Studio, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, we have this tab, DMV. That stands for Dynamic Management View. If you select that, you'll see a whole range of options. But if I scroll down, It's the options prefixed TM schema that I'm interested in. If I select TM schema underscore tables as an example, double click that, it generates this DMV query. And if I run that query, You'll see it retains information relating to the tables in my model. You can see the name of the tables, but also that description that I filled in. What you can do is build yourself a data model that queries those DMVs, and that's step two of this process. To do that, we need to head back on into Power BI. This is a brand new Power BI file. From the Get Data options, we want to use the Analysis Services Connector. If your data set's published to a premium workspace, be that premium capacity or premium per user, you can use the XMLA endpoint to connect at this point. If that's not an option for you, you can still connect to a local Power BI file. To do that, you'll want to grab the server name from DAX Studio. So this DAX Studio instance is connected to the Power BI file that I want to create the documentation for. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, see a server name generated. And there's even a handy copy button here. So we want to copy that. And the other piece of information we'll need is our data model name. When you're connected to a local Power BI file, that's just crazy gooey up in the top left hand corner. Again, we can right click and copy that database name. Back in Power BI Desktop, we can paste the server name here and the database name here. And we want to set that to import mode. And then you need to expand this MDX or DAX query option. And here we paste in the DMV query.
and you can now import that into your data model. I've decided that my documentation is going to contain information about my tables, my columns and my measures. So I've repeated that process and brought in my measures and my columns uh, DMVs as well. So you can see them in my data model here. I've cleaned up the tables to get rid of columns that I'm not interested in. And I've also decided that I'm going to exclude any object that's hidden. So this is just now documenting my visible columns and tables. The word measures is a reserved word in Power BI, so I've just renamed that table to DAX measures instead. And because both the columns DMV and the measures DMV contain a table ID in them, I was able to create a relationship back to my tables table. And off the back of that data model, I've been able to create a report that allows users to browse through information around my tabular model, effectively acting as a set of documentation. So I created this front page as a bit of a menu. But I can navigate to see information about my tables. It will display a description of the table, all the columns available and the description of that column. And I can select which table I want to browse using the slicer on the left. And if I return to my home page, I can see information relating to all the measures in my data model too. I've created a Power BI template file for this data dictionary report. I'll publish it to my GitHub page and I'll make sure there's a link in the description. To use that template, simply add the server name and data model name when prompted to by the parameter. And it doesn't just work with Power BI files, you can use this with analysis services as well. There are many other properties available via the DMVs, so if you wanted to, you could extend this model to add information about calculation groups and hierarchies and other such things. Or as an alternative, there's actually a Power BI external tool available, published by Datamark, that helps you generate a similar set of documentation. That's based on a similar principle of making sure you keep those metadata descriptions updated. I'll make sure that I include a link to the blog that Mark wrote about that external tool. Let me know what you think. Do you currently provide any documentation to go alongside your Power BI datasets? If so, what, what do you do currently? And do you think you might use this technique in the future? I hope that's been useful. As always, if you've got any questions or feedback, please do use that comment section below. If you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow along for more content about Power BI, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you next time.